welcome back friends in this video tutorial we'll be talking about pedigree charts and we'll be talking about uh, how to solve uh, the pedigree chart and how to find out a trade by looking at a pedigree chart okay now actually pedigree charts are very uh, important and very useful for predicting a disease and the inheritance pattern of the disease right so if you can see here there are four different pedigree charts as you can see in this picture and uh, in these four different pedigree charts there are four type of inheritance pattern that can be possible now usually when they uh, provide you uh, problems in exams uh, regarding pedigree chart they can ask you by providing the pedigree chart that what is uh, the inheritance pattern or what type of the inheritance pattern of that particular trait now first of all important thing you need to understand is the concept of trait right so in the concept of trait now trait means it's a kind of characteristic that is carried from one generation to another generation for example if you are talking about the height then then height can be a trait so it can be long or short it can be transferred from one place to another place from one generation to another generation like in this picture you can see this is generation number one here you can uh, here you can see this generation one generation two generation three and four four generations are depicted and we can see here the presence of all these symbols now before uh, going through the discussion of this particular video i will recommend you to understand the basics of pedigree chart that means what do we mean by these symbols now this uh, i i don't tell this uh, i i won't uh, tell all these things in this video because i have already discussed it in my earlier videos so you can go back to my youtube channel and you can find videos on pedigree chart on the basis of the symbolism of the pedigree chart you can watch them and then come here uh, and uh, look for this video okay now in this case simply uh, this field region means uh, diseased individual or affected individual so let me write it here this means affected individual right affected individual and uh, which is not filled which is blank blank means uh, it is not affected or normal it means normal Okay. In all this pedigree, this is a kind of true statements to all these cases, right? So now, uh, in all of these pedigrees, we are going to see this particular disease is spreading from one generation to another generation, right? Now, what are the type of uh, inheritance pattern that is possible? Now, usually there are four different type of inheritance pattern that are possible. So let me write the four different inheritance pattern. The first uh, inheritance pattern that we are going to get is a kind of uh, dominant type dominant type actually uh, two different inheritance pattern is possible one is dominant type and another one is recessive type you all know what this dominant and recessive mean dominant means that particular trait is dominant that means for example if you're talking about a particular uh, gene say say gene for uh, for for the color of your skin so actually the color of our skin is uh, May, uh, or is characterized by many different genes but let's say it's a, if, if it is one gene inheritance for example the color of a flower if we talk about the plants now color of a flower this is controlled by a gene say gene 1 it is having two versions of that same gene it is called the alleles so one should be dominant one should be recessive right so if uh, this particular trait of the color let's say dominant one is green uh, say yellow and recessive one is uh, blue now what will happen in this case uh, the yolo color shows the maximum pattern that means in all this inheritance we are going to see yolo flowers that means this is dominant over blue blue will be present in very few amounts in those cases so that is telling us the dominant and recessive trait and dominant and recessive patterns okay now similarly in case of human traits we all also find dominant and recessive pattern and another most important part of, of all, all this this dominant and recessive pattern you need to find uh, whether uh, that dominant or recessive pattern is is either uh, autosomal trait or a sex link trait that's another very important whether it is autosomal or whether it is a sex linked okay that's very very important right now in all this case in case of recessive also this is true uh, it can be all divided into two part autosomal and recessive now what do we mean by autosomal and uh, sorry auto autosomal and sex link that is uh, we are having two different types of chromosome remember if you uh, remember the sex determination in human being that what we are having we are having 22 pairs of autosome and one pair of sex chromosome and this sex chromosome can be of xx uh, present in female and it can be of xy present in male 
right so if our trait is present in autosome it will be called autosomal if it is present in the sex chromosome it will be called a sex chromosomal uh, in case of sex chromosome we are having 2x or uh, x on y so most of the cases the disease that we are talking about which is carried from one place to another place using sex chromosome is usually found in the x chromosome so sex link determination or sex link inheritance is in turn is a kind of x linked inheritance okay so sex linked is a kind of x linked inheritance so that's the four so ultimately what we get four different types of uh, inheritance pattern so autosomal dominant or uh, autosomal recessive sex linked dominant and sex linked recessive so let me write it here the four different type so here we go autosomal dominant is a kind autosomal recessive is a second type sex linked so let me change the color here then sex linked dominant is uh, another type and sex linked recessive uh, there is no place to write it here anyways uh, sex linked recessive is the fourth type so these are the four different types of inheritance pattern that can be possible now let's look for this particular picture and you know for all, all these four different types of pedigree and try to analyze them and to find what kind of inheritance pattern they are carrying right so uh, whatever question they provide you uh, they they try to uh, they they try to get the answer whether that uh, what are the type of the trait that means you are having four different possibilities for each of this picture right so we need to eliminate rest of the three and stick to one which is going to be our answer right so let's begin with this particular uh, part so if we start with this particular picture here uh, what we can see here in this case that uh, again uh, so we are having this uh, infected and next generation infected then again so uh, let's let's talk about this first one actually which is autosomal dominant autosomal dominant trait as, as we are, as i'm telling this dominant trait in all these cases whatever we are talking about if we are talking about dominant trait dominant trait must be present in at least one individual if a father or mother uh, any one of them is infected right so that's why it is dominant because uh, the presence of this is dominant over other trait right so in any kind of pedigree if you are having uh, organism if we are having mother or father any one of them them infected with the disease uh, their offspring will definitely catch that disease so if this disease pattern follow this rule it will be following the autosomal dominant for example say in this picture if you look at this picture so here it is mother is infected in the next generation we are having sons uh, uh, so uh, females other daughters are infected now here this mother is infected now again uh, other individuals are infected again in third case we are having again infection so we can see the infection that we are carrying from first generation and we are seeing this infection to be carried out till the last generation because at least one of uh, each different generation individual must be affected so that is the goal of this particular that is the actual pattern of the autosomal dominant so it should be present at least one in each parental generation and if it is present at least one in each parental generation it must be transferred to the offsprings right so this this in turn is autosomal sorry in turn is it's a autosomal dominant so it's a autosomal dominant kind of trait now let's follow the second one which is uh, uh, the another dominant which is let's so let's say let's talk about sex link or uh, autosomal recessive for example or autosomal recessive now in case of autosomal recessive what we are seeing here so in case of autosomal recessive as the trait is recessive in nature uh, it cannot be found in each and every generation like it was found in autosomal dominant right because that's why it's recessive it it should be found in one generation and it will be omitted in the next generation then it can be found in again another generation like that so this is a type of pattern for autosomal recessive and if you look at this picture here individual is infected and it is transferred uh, to the next so it's good uh, it seemed like autosomal dominant again transferred to the next seemed like autosomal dominant but finally here we can see father and mother so it's a mother and father both are uninfected but we are having their child infected so if we are having scenario like this father and mother both are uh, uninfected not infected but their children are infected so you you are be you, you should be sure that this particular pattern is not autosomal uh, dominant type this this type of pattern is not dominant it's a signi significance of a recessive type of trait right so it should be a recessive now in this case it is a autosomal recessive trait autosomal recessive trait 
Okay. Now let's talk about the sex linked trade. Now in case of sex linked or X linked trade, the pattern of X linked trade transfer is completely different. Now uh, you may ask me a question that when you uh, when we see this kind of questions in exam, there are four different possibilities and how to solve them, how to go and uh, how to start this problem solving approach. The first important thing I must tell you is that first you need to figure out whether this particular trade is a sex linked trade or a dominant trade. That is going to be the first choice of your answer. So whether the trade is going to be a X linked linked or a autosomal now you can distinguish between an autosomal and x-linked trait by looking at this particular features because in these two figures in uh, bottom figures we are showing the x-linked inheritance now in x-linked inheritance there is a trademark or signature of inheritance and the signature of inheritance that is found in x-linked is a crisscross type inheritance like from father usually the trait travels from father to daughter okay and it again transfer from uh, mother to son so this is the type of transfer that we are going to see in uh, usually in uh, x linked inheritance so it's a kind of crisscross so the trade transferred from father to daughter and mother to son so if you find this kind of inheritance patterns you can be sure that this particular trait is a kind of X linked and another important thing in X linked traits uh, as it is a uh, link to sex chromosomes you can find the sex biasness so let me write it here sex biasness you can find it sex biased traits for example say there are some traits you can find mostly affecting males only in, in all the population and there are some traits uh, that are infecting females only in the population but in autosomes we can in autosomal traits we can find equal distribution of the traits both in male and female right now in this case what we can see in this left hand side picture that we are having uh, most of the case the disease is transferring from let's say here you can see transferred from uh, mother uh, to son and again you can see transfer from father to uh, daughter in this second case right so father to daughter and mother to son so it's telling you that this is a kind of sex link type of inheritance so you, sh you sex link type of inheritance and similarly in this case we can see in whole population you can see lot of individuals are there but among all these individuals uh, only males are affected and rest of them are not affected that is telling you again that this type of inheritance is a kind of sex linked inheritance pattern now i am telling you some important trips uh, tricks and uh, tips about all this process to solve the questions but again i am telling you these are not uh, always foolproof because sometimes uh, there are some tricky questions you can't find uh, answer by simply doing or using this kind of tricks so in those cases you need to follow some uh, actual pattern of uh, how to follow the pedigree analysis i'll be teaching you that in the later videos how to solve that using a original uh, and step by step approach but these are the some tricks that you can use to solve the problems pretty quickly because in CSI and net there are problems that are coming and you need to solve this question really faster right so in this case what we can see in, in, in this case again so once you be sure that these are the sex linked inheritance the second important uh, part of your job is to solve whether they are dominant or recessive type now in this case we, what we can see if it, it is a dominant then in every generation we are going to find one individual infected and if the father or mother any one of them are infected then definitely that is going to be transferred to their progeny now in this case we can see here it is the mother affected and here it is transferred again another father affected transferred so that means this is a kind of dominant also right so we previously known that this is uh, this was sex linked now it is dominant so it's a kind of sex linked dominant trait now on the other hand this picture what we are, we can see here that uh, uh, in each generation there is very very least amount of individuals are affected and there is a whole generation we can see uh, both mother and father uh, all of them are unaffected they are normal they are healthy but their child are getting the disease so definitely it is not the symptom of a dominant trait it is a symptom of a recessive trait so definitely this is going to be a recessive and we also uh, figured out that this particular trait is uh, a sex bias trait because it is only affecting males in, in three generations so it's also sex link so it's a sex link recessive trait that's how you need to follow uh, the dominant and recessive traits in all these cases right so that's how you can uh, actually question or you can answer all those questions regarding the pack now in the in the future videos we will be taking one of these different type of four possibilities and we'll be looking in detailed mechanism how to solve that kind of problems right so that's it and i hope that's helpful thank you